Hi friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Juan, I am a yarn addict, hence the name Juan the Yarn Addict. And I want to thank each and every one of you guys for stopping by to check out my video today. This is a yarn and crochet channel where we talk about all things yarn and all things crochet. So if that interests you, please consider subscribing to my channel, hitting that like button and hitting that notification bell to stay updated with everything regarding me and my channel. In the meantime though, please sit back and enjoy another episode of Spin the Wheel for a Beanie. So, if you're happening upon this channel for the first time, or if you haven't seen one of the episodes of Spin the Wheel for a Beanie, this is an episode where we know we're making a beanie, but we have no idea what stitches we're using or what it's even going to look like at this point. We just know we're making a beanie. The wheel will literally tell us how many different stitches we will be using and what stitches we're going to be using. So let me just show you the wheel, and I do apologize for the glare. The dots around the perimeter of the wheel here have four and five dots alternating. So based on spins, we will find out if we're going to have four different stitches or five different stitches in our project today. Once we figure out if we're going to have four or five, then we will spin that many amount of times to get four or five different stitches for our project. Once we have all of that information, then we're going to go ahead and do a tutorial and we're going to build this beanie on the fly. Okay. So without further ado, let me just bring you down to share a piece of the pie slice with you guys. Bring it down a little more. There we go. And what I'm going to do now is I am actually going to tell you what these symbols are. Okay. I drew symbols just so that it's easier to interpret for those of you guys who are watching me from different countries. Um, or whatever the case may be. So, as I mentioned, there's four dots and five dots, and it rotates all the way around the wheel here. Okay, so there's that. Now, this first pie slice here, the symbol is single crochet. The second symbol here is double crochet. The third one is a star stitch. This next one is waffle stitch. This here is a spiked double crochet. This next one here is a single herringbone stitch. This next one here in purple is a front post double crochet. This one here is the cobblestone stitch. This one here is the modified alpine stitch. This here is a double herringbone stitch. This one here is an extended single crochet. This one here is a half double V stitch. This one here is the houndstooth stitch. And last but not least, we have the moss stitch. So those are the 14 stitches. Um, the stitches, as I mentioned, may or may not have mentioned, I can't remember at this point, I apologize, but I did ask my Facebook group and these were the most popular responses that I got from my Facebook group. So I went ahead and compiled a list. I wrote down all the things and that's how we got all the stitches. Okay. So the first thing that we need to do, as I just mentioned, we need to figure out if we're going to have four stitches, four different stitches or five different stitches in our project. Okay. So let me bring you back down here. Okay, so let's go back to the single. Now, what we're doing is we're going to go ahead and spin the best of three. Okay, so, yep, here we go. Here goes nothing. Okay, so we have five. Let's spin again. Now, if we get five again, we know it's going to be five. We don't have to spin a third time. But... If we get four, then we have to spin a third time just to make sure if it's going to be four or five. Okay, let's see. Okay, so it's five. So we're going to have five different stitches for this particular project, which I'm super excited about. Okay, because there's 14 different ones here and there's some amazing stitches. So... Let me go ahead and get my pen and paper ready. So we're looking for five different stitches on this project. Okay. So I'm going to leave it right where it is and I'm going to spin from here for our first stitch. 
Wait, that doesn't count. <laughs> uh -oh. Sorry, I didn't get a good grip. I'm nervous. All right, here we go. The star stitch. Star stitch. Okay, super excited about that. We haven't had this. This is a new one for our channel, for our beanies. So that's exciting. Let's go ahead and spin for the second stitch. So this here is a single herringbone. Okay. Let's go ahead and spin for the third. Uh, hasn't come over yet, so we're still here. So that is a spiked double crochet. Okay. So let's go ahead and spin for our fourth stitch. So it says star, but we already have it, so we have to spin again. So this is the double herringbone. Okay. That's going to be interesting. Single and double in the same hat. Beanie. That's awesome. Okay. Let's go ahead and spin for the last stitch. The waffle stitch. Okay. All right. So we, we have our stitches, friends. It's going to be challenging. <laughs> but that's what makes this fun, right? Okay. So we have the star stitch. We have a single herringbone stitch. We have a spiked double crochet, a double herringbone stitch, and a waffle stitch. Wow. Okay. So let me set up shop and I will see you guys on the other side. Hi friends. So here we are on the other side. And before we get started, I kind of want to show you the color story that I chose for today's project. So I am using Loops and Threads Soft Classic. It's a medium four weight yarn. Feel free to use any medium four weight yarn you would like. Um, so charcoal, cornflower, gray, and off-white, or cream, sorry, cream. So that's the color way choice for today's project, okay? So um, let's move these over here. And the hook that I'm using for today's project is a six millimeter US letter J. We're gonna need a darning needle to sew in our ends and a pair of scissors to do all the cutting, okay? So let me bring you down just like that. Perfect, okay. So I decided that for this project, I would like to do a ribbed crown. They're my favorite. And since we're using all the stitches, why not do a ribbed crown? It's gonna be great, we're gonna love it, okay? So we're going to start with the charcoal. We're going to do a ribbed crown. Let me zoom in a little bit. There we go. Okay, so to start, we need to create a slip knot on our hook. However you do that is absolutely fine, so long as the end result is this. Okay, now I use four chains to make a circle. You can use a magic circle if you'd like. This is how I do it. I just do the four chains, one, two, three, and four. I take the tip of the crochet hook and I enter it into the first chain, draw up a loop, slip to close, pull on the working yarn to create a circle, just like that. So from here, what we need to do is just chain one, doesn't count towards anything. And now what we need to do is 12 double crochets in the circle. Just 
just like that. 12 double crochets in the circle. So go ahead and do that, my friends, and I shall see you at the end of round one. 12 double crochets. Okay, friends, so here we have 12 double crochets. And what we need to do is take the tip of our crochet hook and insert it into the first double crochet of the round, which is right there. Drop a loop and slip to close to end round one. So for round two, what we need to do is chain one and go back into the loop we just came out of, which is right there, with a double crochet. And then the next thing we need to do is to take the chain one and the double crochet from round one and do what's called a front post double crochet. Yarn over, go around the chain one and the double crochet, draw up a loop and perform your double crochet as normal. Just like that. You're gonna slide the front post over so you can get to the next stitch, which is right here. That next stitch gets a double crochet. And then directly in front of it, a front post double crochet. And that's the repeat for round two. Regular double crochet. Front post double crochet. Just like that. Regular double crochet front post double crochet. So continue doing that and I will see you at the end of round two. You're gonna need a total of 24 double crochets, or 24 stitches, 12 double crochets, and 12 front post double crochets alternating. Double crochet, front post double crochet, just like that. So I will see you when we get to the end of round two. Okay, friends, so here we are at the end of round two. So in order to close, what we need to do is insert the tip of our crochet hook into the first stitch of the round. So this little piece right here was the chain one. That's the first stitch. So we're going to insert our hook, draw up a loop, and slip to close, just like that. So for round three, we need a total of 36 stitches. So to start, we're gonna chain one and go back into the stitch we just came out of, which is literally right here. We're gonna do a double crochet and go into that stitch, just like that. And then a double crochet in the next stitch. And then a front post double crochet right in front of it. We're carrying up the front post from the previous round. Just like that. Next, double crochet next door. Double crochet next door to that one. And then a front post double crochet in front of that. Okay, so that's the repeat of the round. It's gonna be a double crochet, double crochet, and a front post double crochet right in front of there. Okay, we'll do it one more time. Double crochet. And by the way, the front posts may sometimes get in the way of your stitches, so slide them over so you don't miss stitches in your round, okay? So back to this, double crochet, and then another double crochet and then directly in front of that will be a front post double crochet. You're carrying up the post, okay? Just like that. So continue doing that and I will see you at the end of round three for a total of 36 stitches, okay? Okay, friends, so here we are at the end of round three, a total of 36 stitches in the round. You should have ended with a front post double crochet right here. 
To close off round three, we need to insert the tip of our crochet hook into this first stitch of the round. Drop a loop and slip to close. So for round four, we need 48 total stitches. So to do that, we're going to chain one and go back into the stitch we just came out of with a double crochet. The next thing we need to do is a front post double crochet right here. Not the one beneath it, but the one next door. So downstairs and over one. Front post double crochet there. Slide that over so you don't miss a stitch. So then the next thing we need to do is a regular double crochet in the next stitch and then a front post directly beneath that. Okay, so we'll do that again. Double crochet, front post double crochet right here. So not the one directly beneath, but down one and over one. And then a regular double crochet and then a front post double crochet. Let's do it again. Double crochet, front post double crochet, and then in the next stitch here, double crochet, and then a front post double crochet. Okay. We'll do it one more time. So in the next stitch, double crochet. The next stitch is going to be a front post double crochet. Now if you look, see the ribbing here? The stitch right before the ribbing is the one that's going to get the front post double crochet. Just like that. And then the very next stitch where this ribbing is, this next stitch gets a regular double crochet, and then a front post double crochet to carry that ribbing up. Just like that. Okay? So we'll do it one more time. Double crochet, front post double crochet. double crochet, front post double crochet. And if you notice the ribbing, if I tilt it sideways, you can kind of see how the ribbing literally just follows itself up and you're starting a new front post double crochet there. Okay, just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna go ahead and do it one more time. I wanna make sure you guys are good. So it's going to be a double crochet and then the stitch right before the ribbing, which is right here, we're going to go ahead and do a front post double crochet. Okay. And then where the ribbing is, we're going to do a double crochet right above and then we're going to go ahead and do a front post double crochet. Just like that. Okay. So continue doing that. And I will meet you at the end of round four, 48 total stitches, okay? Okay, friends, so here we are at the end of round four. We have 48 total stitches, okay? So to close out round four, what we need to do is insert the tip of our crochet hook into the very first stitch of the round, which is right there. We're gonna drop a loop and slip to close and chain one. So for round five, we need a total of 60 stitches, okay? So to start, we gotta go back into the stitch we just came out of, which is right here. We need to insert a double crochet into that stitch right there, just like that. Next, what we need to do is bring up this uh, stitch here that's uh, currently a front post from the previous round. We're gonna do a front post double crochet. So we're gonna carry that stitch up. Just like that. 
And then next to that, we're gonna do a regular double crochet. And then next to that, a regular double crochet. And then a front post double crochet. Oops. There we go. So let's do it again. Double crochet. Front post double crochet. Double crochet. Double crochet. Front post double crochet. So the existing ribbing that we have started from the previous round literally just gets carried up. And the stitches that we have the full ribbing on from every row, that's our increase. Those particular stitches will always receive a double crochet and a front post right in front of it. Okay, so let's do it again. Double crochet. Front post, double crochet. Double crochet. Double crochet. And front post, double crochet. Okay, let's do it one more time. So in the next stitch here, it's a double crochet. And then next, we're carrying up the front post from the previous round. Front post, double crochet. Then double crochet. Then double crochet. And then front post, double crochet. Okay. So continue doing that and I will see you at the end of the round. You're going to need a total of 60 stitches. Okay. Okay friends, so here we are at the end of round five with 60 total stitches. Okay. And I did measure this. So it's coming out to be five and a half inches so far which is kind of where we need to be. So uh, to close out round five, what we need to do is take the tip of our crochet hook, insert it into the first stitch, draw up a loop, and slip to close. Chain one. Okay, so what we need to do now is we are going to do a single herringbone stitch. Okay, so to do that, we're going to start with a single crochet in the stitch we just came out of. And I highly recommend that your stitches be loose. This is a very tight stitch and making it loose uh, will keep your beanie what you need it to be. If you make it regular, it's going to pull your stitches super tight and the fit will not be where it needs to be. So if you make it loose, it has a little bit of play um, and that's kind of what we need okay so we go back here so we're going to start with a single crochet nice and loose and then we're going to go into the leg of the stitch this is the leg right here go into the leg of the stitch and then go into the next stitch draw up a loop nice and loose yarn over and go through all the loops Go into that very last leg of the stitch, go into the stitch, draw up a loop, yarn over, and go through all three. And it's that simple. Just go in, draw up a loop, yarn over, and go through all of them. Okay? So go ahead and do that. We're going to go ahead and do 60 stitches for the round. All single crochet herringbone stitches, nice and loose. See, as it gets worked, it, it tightens up. So you don't have to worry about the stitches actually being loose. 
you have to, as you're working it, keep it loose so that as it gets worked, it, it, it will tighten up, okay? So go into the last leg there, go into the stitch, draw up a loop. It's very simple, just like that. Okay, continue doing that and I will see you at the end of round six. 60 stitches, all single herringbone stitches, okay? Okay, friends, so here we are at the end of round six. Okay, and so what we need to do to close off the round is insert the tip of our crochet hook into that first stitch. But before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and change colors. We're going to introduce cornflower, which is this blue. Okay, I've already taken the liberty to cut a nice long tail here. And so what we need to do is insert our crochet hook into the first stitch of the round. Just like that. And then we're going to go ahead and pull the cornflower through the charcoal. Just like that. We're going to flip over. And we're going to gently pull on all the strings here. And then tie just like that. Okay, so here we are. Now, for round seven, we are going to do the star stitch. So, we're going to start that by chaining three. Just like that. And so what's going to happen here is, is that we're going to go into this chain, this chain, the stitch we came out of, and the next two. So it's an L, and we're going to go into all those stitches. Okay? We're going to draw up a loop. So first, what we need to do is go into the second chain from the hook, draw up a loop, go into that first chain, draw up a loop, go into the stitch we came out of, draw up a loop, go into the next stitch, draw up a loop, and the next stitch, draw up a loop. You should have six loops on your hook. Yarn over and go through all six. Chain one. Okay? Just like that. Perfect. So now what we need to do is go into this open space right here. Go into the chain. Drop a loop. Go into the last leg of the star. Draw up a loop. Go into the stitch of the last leg. Draw up a loop. That's four. Go into the next stitch. Draw up a loop. And in the next stitch, draw up a loop. So you should have six loops on your hook. Going to yarn over and go through all of them. Chain one. We'll do it again. Go into the chain. Draw up a loop. Go into the last leg. Draw up a loop. Go into the stitch of the last leg. Draw up a loop. That's four. Go into the next stitch. Draw up a loop. And go into the next stitch. Draw up a loop. You should have six loops on your hook. Yarn over and go through all of them. Just like that. And chain one. Okay? So continue doing that. I'm going to do one more with you guys. But um, continue doing that all the way around. Okay? So go into the chain. Draw up a loop. Go into the last leg of the star and draw up a loop. Go into the stitch of the last leg and draw up a loop. Go into the next stitch, draw up a loop. Then go into the next stitch and draw up a loop. Just like that. Yarn over and go through all six of those loops. Chain one to close that off. Okay, so continue doing that, and I will see you at the end of round seven right here. Okay, okay, friends, so here we are at the end of round seven. Star stitch, and if you count your stars, you should have 30 stars all the way around your project here, and you should have ended right here. Okay, 
So what we need to do is put the other side of the star on here. So in order to do that, what we need to do is take the tip of our crochet hook and insert it into this top part here. Drop a loop and slip to close. And then what I do now is I chain one and then in the eyes, the circles here of every star, you're going to put in two half double crochets. So you're going to yarn over, go into that circle there and just do a half double crochet two times. No chains in between, no nothing. You're just going to do two half double crochets right into the centers of every star. Okay? And that's kind of what it's going to look like. All right. So let's continue doing that just for a few more. So right into those circles there otherwise known as eyes of the star. Okay, so continue doing that and I'll see you at the end of round eight. Okay, two half double crochets in every eye for a total of 60 stitches. Okay, friends, so here we are at the end of round eight. We just completed the top half of our stars. You should have 60 stitches in the round ending with the two half double crochets in the last star of the round. Okay, so for round nine, what we're going to do is another round of star stitches. Okay, so what we need to do now is go into the first half double crochet of the round here, which is not this, it's, it's the two half doubles here. So this right here is the first stitch of the round. So we're going to go in there, drop a loop, slip to close. And we're going to chain one, chain two, and chain three. Okay? And so, like, like round seven here, we're going to go into the second chain, drop a loop, go into the first chain, and drop a loop. We're going to go into the stitch we just came out of and draw up a loop and then go into the next stitch and draw up a loop. And then one more. So we should have six loops. We're going to yarn over and go through all the loops. Chain one. Okay. So, so now what we need to do is go into the chain, draw one, go into the leg, draw one, go into the stitch of the leg, draw one, that's four, go into the next two stitches and drop a loop. So you should have six on your hook. Yarn over and go through all six, chain one. Okay, continue doing that and I shall see you at the end of the round. Let me do one more with you though. Go into the chain, drop a loop, go into the last leg here and drop a loop. Go into the stitch of the last leg and draw up a loop. You should have four there, and then go into the next two stitches and draw up a loop, just like that. Yarn over and go through all six of those loops. Chain one to close. Okay? So continue doing that, and I will see you at the end of the round. Okay, friends, so here we are at round nine. So far I have 29 stars uh, for round nine. So I just need to do one more. And so let's go into the chain, draw up a loop, go into the leg, draw up a loop, go into the stitch, draw up a loop, it's four, five, and then the sixth is literally that very last stitch of the round. So there's six, yarn over, Go through all the loops there to, and then chain to close. And so that's literally that right there. So what you want to do is you want to go into this top part of the star, this top corner. Drop a loop and slip to close. So it's pretty solid there. 
okay? So what we want to do now is chain one and then do uh, for round 10, it's going to be two half double crochets in every circle of the star there. Two half double crochets just like this. Okay, so you're going to need 60 stitches for this round. Two half double crochets. Easy peasy. Just like that. Okay. And I'll see you at the end of round 10. Okay, friends, so here we are at the end of round 10. We have a total of 60 stitches, which was two half double crochets in every center of the star. Okay. So for round 11, I want to go ahead and introduce another color. I'm going to bring in this cream white color. So in order to do that, let's go ahead and cut a tail. Make sure it's a decent length, you know, five inches or so. Okay, so let's go ahead and insert our crochet hook in the very first stitch of the round, which is the first half double crochet. Make sure to grab both of those loops just like that. So we're going to grab the cream color, slide it through, and slide it through, just like that, very gently. Let's turn the work over. And then what we want to do is tie our ends. Just like that. Pull on the working yarn, not too tight, just enough so that it's got some play there. And then just tie this down twice. Okay. So there we are. Okay, so for this next round, for round 11, 6, 7, 8, 9, yep, for round 11, what we're going to do is we are going to do the spiked double crochet. So this, in order to execute that here, what we're going to do is we are going to do half double crochets as well as spiked double crochets, okay? So let's chain one. And then what we're going to do is go back into the stitch that we just came out of with a half double crochet. And then we're going to do a double crochet into the eye. So we're going to go down to the eye, grab it and pull it up just like that. And then complete our spiked double crochet. And then in the next stitch, it's going to be a half double crochet. Pretty simple. So spiked double crochet, just like that, and then half double crochet, just like that. So the eye of every star will get a spiked double crochet, just like that. Okay, so let's do that again. We did a half double here, so the next stitch is going to be a spiked double, just like that. And then the next stitch is a half double crochet. You're alternating between both of them, okay? So continue doing that uh, for this particular round. We're just alternating between half double crochets and spiked doubles, okay? So I shall see you at the end of the round. Okay, friends, so here we are at the end of round 11 where we have the spiked double crochet. So this is kind of what our project is looking like. My ends are sewn in. It's looking so good right now. So proud of this. Okay. So we're gonna keep this uh, cream white on. We're going to begin our waffle stitch. So what we need to do is close off round 11 and Insert the tip of our crochet hook into the first stitch, draw up a loop, and slip to close, and chain one. 
So we need to do a round of double crochets to start. So we're gonna go into the stitch we just came out of, do a double crochet, and we're gonna do a double crochet in every stitch of the round for 60 double crochets, okay? So round 12 is gonna be all double crochets in every stitch, okay? It's pretty simple. I shall see you at the end of round 12, 60 double crochets. Okay, so now that I am here at the end of round 12, what we need to do is close off round 12, which is the base of our waffle stitch, okay? So let's go ahead and insert the tip of our crochet hook into the first stitch, draw up a loop, and slip to close, just like that. Now what we're gonna do is chain one. Now from here, what we need to do is a front post double crochet. So we're gonna yarn over and go through the chain one and the, the double crochet here. So we're gonna go around both of those. Perform a double crochet as normal, just like that. The next two stitches get regular double crochets. Just like that. And then this next stitch here gets a front post double crochet. And that's the repeat of the round. So it's going to be um, double, double, front post. Double, double, front post. All the way around. Let's do some more. So that's double crochet, double crochet, and then front post, double crochet. Okay, so let's do that again. Double crochet, double crochet, and then front post double crochet right here. So that's how it's looking. It doesn't look like much now, but um, once we put a row or two more on here, we'll start to see the waffle take shape. In the meantime, we're gonna continue with this pattern here. So double crochet, double crochet, front post. Double crochet, double crochet, and front post, okay? Just like that. So continue doing that for this particular round and I shall see you at the end of the round, okay? Okay friends, so here we are at the end of round 13, okay? We alternated between front posts and two double crochets all the way around, okay? This is what our work is looking like so far. It's looking amazing, we're loving it, yep. Okay, so to close off round 13, we need to insert our hook into the first stitch of the round, which happens to be the front post double crochet, draw a loop, and slip to close, just like that. We're going to chain one and turn our work. So we're going to go back into the stitch we just came out of with a double crochet. Just like that. Okay, now these next two stitches are going to get front post double crochets. One, and two, just like that. And this next stitch right here, which was the front post on this side, will receive a regular double crochet. And then the next stitch will get two front posts, well, one front post here, and one front post here. It's literally the opposite of what was happening in the other side here. So if you look on this, the front side here, the front side of our work, the regular double crochets now receive front posts on the other side. And the front posts on the right, on the front side here will receive regular double crochets. So we're just doing the reverse. So this side here, 
had front post, double, double front post, and then on the inside, it's going to be um, double crochet, front post, front post, double crochet, front post, front post. So it's literally the opposite, okay? So after the two front posts, we'll do a regular double crochet, just like that, and then two front post double crochets, just like that. Regular double crochet, two front post double crochets, and it alternates like that all the way around, okay? So continue doing this, and I shall see you at the end of the round. Okay, friends, so here we are at the end of round 14, where we did double crochet, two front posts, double crochet, two front posts. Um, and so now what we need to do to close out round 14 is to go into the first stitch of the round. Oops. Drop a loop and slip to close. We're gonna chain one. Whoops, let's try that again. Drop a loop, slip to close, chain one and turn our work. So we're going to go back to the front, okay? And so now we're going to do the opposite of what we just did, okay? So now what we need to do is a front post double crochet, just like that. And then we need to do two double crochets, just like that. And then a front post double crochet. And then two double crochets. So we're just going to be alternating between one row to the next. Okay? Piece of cake. Let me make sure I'm not missing any. Okay, yeah. Two double crochets. And a front post double crochet. So we're just carrying it over from the previous row, just like that, okay? So continue doing that and I will see you at the end of round 15. Two double crochets and then a front post double crochet in the next stitch. Two double crochets, just like that. And a front post double crochet in the next stitch, okay? So I shall see you at the end of round 15. Okay, friends, so we're at the end of round 15 and I kind of wanted to give you a snapshot as to where we're at. So it's looking really, really good so far. So far we have a ribbed crown. We have the single herringbone stitch to kind of polish off the ribbing. And then we have two complete sets of star stitches. And then we have the spiked double crochet here. And then this whole section here is the waffle stitch. So that's kind of where we're at now. So what needs to happen is we need to do one more round of waffle stitches to kind of give it a full square. And then we will move on to the last stitch of the challenge, which needs to be the double herringbone stitch, okay? So this is the end of round 15, and what we need to do is take the tip of our crochet hook and go into the first stitch, drop a loop, and slip to close. We're gonna chain one and turn our work, so we're gonna be working from the inside, okay? Now what has to happen is we need to do a front post, actually, no we don't. What we need to do is a regular double crochet. Sorry about that. Had to think for a second. So regular double crochet. And then these next two stitches here get two front post double crochets. So literally just the opposite of what happened out here. So two front posts and then a regular double crochet. Two front posts.
and a regular double crochet. Okay, so continue doing that for round 16 and I'll see you at the end. Hi friends, so here we are at the end of round 16 and we just completed our waffle stitch. Okay, so we're still on the inside here. And so let me just go ahead and fix this. All right, so yeah, this was the last stitch of the round. Okay, perfect. So now what we wanna do is close off round 16 and introduce the fourth color. And I've already taken the liberty of cutting off the tail, so we're good there. And so what we need to do is insert the hook into the first stitch of the round, grab the light gray, which is the fourth color, pull it through and pull it through just like that. And then now what we need to do is tie our tails. And what will happen is I will take the tails and the knot and slide them to the inside. But as of right now, I'm just going to chain one and turn my work over. And again, all of this will actually go to the inside. So you're gonna insert your hook from the inside and pull it in just like that. There we are. Okay. All right, so now what we wanna do is the double herringbone, which is the last stitch of our beanie challenge here or spin the wheel beanie series. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back into the stitch we just came out of, which is technically that one right there. So we're gonna yarn over, we're gonna go into the stitch, we're gonna drop a loop, we're gonna, oops, drop a loop, and we're gonna go through the first loop just like that. We're gonna yarn over, go through the second one, yarn over, go through both. Okay, let's do that again. So yarn over, go into the stitch, drop a loop, and slip through that one loop there. Yarn over, go through the second one, yarn over, go through the final two. That's literally it. So yarn over, go into the stitch, drop a loop, go through the first loop there, yarn over, go through the next one, yarn over, go through both, just like that. Do it again. Yarn over, go into the stitch, draw up a loop, slip through the one, yarn over, go through the next one, yarn over, go through both. So we're going to do this for the entire round. 60 double crochet herringbone stitches. So continue doing that and I will see you at the end of round 17. Okay, so here we are at the end of round 17. Um, so what we're going to need to do is insert our hook into the first stitch of the round, draw up a loop and slip to close. We're gonna chain one and turn our work. The herringbone only works properly if we alternate the rows from inside and outside. So now what we're gonna need to do is go into the stitch we just came out of, which is right here. Yarn over, go into that stitch, oops. First one's always tough, especially when you're turning over. So you're gonna go into the one loop there, yarn over, go into the second one, and go through both. And so we're gonna work in the opposite direction here. 60 double crochet herringbone stitches for the round, going in the opposite direction, just like that, okay? So continue doing that and I shall see you at the end of the round. Okay, so here we are at the end of round 18 and we just did a complete set of her herringbone stitches. You can kind of see how it's going in their own direction there. So what we're going to do now is um, change color. We're gonna add in our tie-in color. So I call that a tie-in, like what you started with, what you ended with. So let's go ahead and cut a tail. 
just like that. Okay. And we're going to introduce the charcoal back into our project. And we're going to insert the tip of our crochet hook into the first stitch. We're going to pull it through and pull it through just like that. And we're going to tie our tails just like that. It's perfect play. And what I like to do is draw up a bunny ear, go into the project from behind, grab the tails, making sure to not pull your working yarn through. So this is the working yarn. I'm just holding on to that. I'm going to pull the tails through to the inside of the project. There we go. So I'm going to put that back in. Okay, just like that. Chain one and come back to the front. Okay, there we go. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and do a round of half double crochets. Now I'm only using that because we had to use it in the star stitch, so it's fair play. So we're gonna go ahead and use the half double crochet. Going back into the stitch you just came out of, which is that one right there. We're gonna do a half double crochet in every stitch of the round. You're going to need to do 60 half double crochets, just like this. So I shall see you at the end of the round. This is round 19. Okay, friends, so here we are at the end of round 19, and we're just going to Insert our hook into the first stitch, draw a loop, slip to close. You have 60 half double crochets for the round. We're going to chain one and we're going to go back into the stitch we just came out of but through the top. We're going to do half double crochets but we're going to go through the third loop. So if you insert your crochet hook through the top, go down and through the back, you'll pick up two loops just like that. You're going to draw a loop, yarn over, and go through all the loops. So if you notice, let me make a bunny ear here and show you with my darning needle here. So this loop here is the front loop. This is the back loop. If you turn it slightly towards you, there's another loop right here. That's the third loop. So as we're doing the half double crochets, Instead of going through the front like this, we're going to go in the top and out the back. And we're going to pick up the second and the third loop just like that. Okay? And what's going to happen is it's going to create a really nice little edge here. Okay? It's just decorative edging. Okay? Just to give our beanie some finesse. So, yarn over, go through the top and out the back. You'll pick up two loops. Let me separate them so you can see. Draw a loop, yarn over, and go through all three. Oops. Yarn over. Go in, draw a loop. Okay. So it's pretty routine at this point. So yarn over, go in the top and out the back, picking up the back loop and the third loop. Draw your yarn through, draw a loop. Yarn over and go through all three. So it's just a regular half double crochet, but you're going in the stitch and out the back and picking up the last, the second, uh, the back loop and the third loop. Okay. So continue doing that, and I shall see you at the end of the round. Okay, friends. So here we are at the end of round twenty. I went ahead and tried on my beanie. Um, I need to add two more rows of this. Uh, half double crochet in the third loop 
um, I would suggest trying on your project to see if it fits. And um, if you have, you know, if it fits nice, then you can stop here at round 20. Um, but I would suggest keep going until the rim of your beanie uh, touches your earlobe. So I still have two more uh, rounds to go. So I'm going to go ahead and do those two rounds and I will be right back. Okay, friends, I am back. So apparently I only needed to do one more round. So not two like I anticipated. So to finish out the project here, you just, uh, let's say, let's say you finished here. So then what you want to do is you want to take the tip of your crochet hook, insert it into the first stitch of the round, draw a loop, slip to close, and chain two. Then you want to grab your scissors, cut a tail, and then pull your uh, crochet hook away from your work. Take your index finger and your thumb, these two. You're going to pull down this way and pull your yarn the opposite way at the same time. And when you do that, you create this double knot here. It's like virtually impossible to get out. So what you want to do now, yarn over the eye of the needle, push through, and let's sew in our ends very quickly. like that. Make sure to grab fibers along the way. We definitely need those. That will help hold the work in place without it falling apart. There we go. Let's trim that. Okay. I'm going to finish tying in my tails. I only have these two left. I'm going to sew them in and then I'll see you on the other side for final thoughts. Okay, friends, so here we are. If you made it all the way to the end, I applaud you. An hour and two minutes in and we're finally at long last, we're at the end. So this is what it looks like. It looks phenomenal, guys. So we have the ribbed crown and then we have the single herringbone, the single crochet herringbones, and then we have star stitches, two complete sets of star stitches, and then we have the spiked double crochet going around just that one time, just like that, and then we have a section here of the waffle stitch, and then in gray here we have the double crochet herringbone stitch. So. We've achieved what we set out to achieve. And because I used half double crochets to complete the star stitch, it was only fitting to bring down the half double crochets here. So I felt it was fair play since we um, introduced the half double crochets here at the top, which helped us tie it off at the end. And it's got a nice finished look here on the end. So I'm really proud of this. This goes to prove, guys, that there's no limits to what you can build in terms of stitches and, and beanies and things. If we have stitches, we can make beanies. So I'm going to put this on. Look at how awesome that looks on me. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, so I am naming this the No Limits Beanie because there are no limits to what we can do if we put our minds to a task. I had some impossible stitches that I had to put together, more difficult than the last one. I mean, the star stitch, the single herringbone, the spiked double crochet, the double herringbone stitch, and the waffle stitch, all in one project and we were able to do it. So I just feel like there's no limits to what we can do because, I mean, seriously, we can take any stitch, throw it together, make it make sense, and it come out looking so nice. So the No Limits Beanie Friends. I used four different colorways. By all means, use whatever colorways you'd like. Um, whatever yarns you have, 
Um, I do recommend that you stick to a medium four weight yarn. If you went to a bulky five, the sizing may be a little uh, bigger than you'd want. So, and the opposite is true if you went with a three weight yarn, so it might be too small. So that's it, my friends. If you enjoyed this as much as I hope you did, uh, please hit the like button. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you're still not sure, check out some of my other videos and see if, you know, they're your vibe. And if they are, please subscribe. I'd like to have all the people here. And last but not least, hit that notification bell to stay updated with me and my channel. It's been a pleasure doing this tutorial for you guys. It's been an adventure. And again, thank you for hanging out with me. And until the next one, guys, take care. Bye-bye.